something which is grounded in dreams and the subconscious. Dolly said he was inspired by a sublime craziness. Some critics considered his work vulgar and motivated by money. Dolly also designed glassware, furniture, and a museum in northeast Spain where he will be buried. Salvador Dolly was 84. Spanish town where he was born 84 years ago, Salvador Dolly died. His paintings won fame, but not all of his artistry was on canvas. But Dolly once said his greatest work of art was himself. He was eccentric, flamboyant. A lot of people say that you're about the greatest artist uh, alive today. Uh, would you uh, go along with that? Look at you. Not everyone shared his appraisal. There was outrage over his portrait of Shirley Temple, his interpretation of the Mona Lisa. But Dolly was a brilliant technician. He said his aim was to completely discredit the world of reality. He described his paintings as incoherent, chaotic pictures of dreams. Alfred Hitchcock hired him to create the dream sequence in Spellbound. What I was after was, again, the vividness of dreams. Dolly believed that money was glory. He even did a commercial for Alka-Seltzer. Here, he neutralizes that bad excess acid. Alka-Seltzer is a work of art, truly one of a kind, like uh, Dali. He called his work a sublime craziness. Whatever it was, Dali helped revolutionize art in our century. Some of those theories were understandable only to him. Paranoiac, critical method. But all his theories revolved around his unshakable belief that he, Salvador Dali, was a great painter and a crazy person. Oh, to Dali, it was important to be crazy, or at least to be perceived as being crazy. From the 1920s onward, he pioneered the idea of art as public performance. Painter, comedian, and provocateur all rolled up into one. In that sense, he was the artistic godfather to everyone from Andy Warhol to the Beatles to Pee Wee Herman. All of which sometimes obscured the fact that Salvador Dali created some astonishing paintings. He first put brush to canvas when he was nine and began painting the landscapes of his native Spain. A self-portrait at age 19. And during his heyday, the surreal canvases that made him famous, the strange and irrational dreamscapes, fantasies, nightmares. He was wanting to paint a three-dimensional dream in color. I mean, for example, uh, when you think of the soft watches, Anybody who has seen the soft watches for one second will never forget that. And though the serious art world turned up its nose at Dali's works long ago, he cried all the way to the bank. Dali prints flooded art markets around the world. Gala, please. Dali painted his wife, Gala, time and again, working her, and sometimes himself, into grand religious canvases. Together, they held court in a kind of surreal vaudeville show. And when Gala died in 1982, a lonely Salvador Dali retired to his home in Spain to await his own death. Death is all time present in my precious life. In the end, he left hundreds of paintings, outrageous sculptures, and a saying he liked, happy is he who causes scandal. By that measure, Salvador Dali died a very happy man, indeed. David Browning, CBS News, Los Angeles. And that's the CBS Evening News. Dan Rather, see you tomorrow. Dali died today in the Spanish town where he was born and raised. And what an impact he had, this extraordinary, prolific, and often outrageous artist. He was 84. He died of heart failure and pneumonia. ABC's Robert Trout is in Spain. During the course of his long life, Salvador Dali was called many things. A magician, an exhibitionist, a brilliant artist, a talent that was never completely fulfilled. Even to a public that might never have seen one of his original paintings, Salvador Dali was instantly recognizable with his thin, waxed, curled-up mustache, his brocaded waistcoats, his silver-headed walking stick. His acts of exhibitionism gave him worldwide publicity. 
arriving in New York aboard ship inside a plastic egg, which he said represented the womb, arriving for a lecture in a Rolls Royce jammed with a thousand cauliflowers, delivering a lecture while wearing a deep sea diving suit and having to be rescued when the air valve stuck. None of these exhibitions would have aroused comment had Dali not been an outstanding, if controversial, artist. Although he broke with the Surrealist movement long ago, he never lost the label, and most people identified Dali with his dreamlike visions, the limp watches, his transparent human figures, the crutches propping up unbalanced structures, the females with strange anatomical adornments, like a set of drawers that open in order, Dali said, to reveal the human soul within. But Dali also painted somewhat more conventional pictures, like the Christ of St. John of the Cross and the dream of Christopher Columbus, as well as his wife, Gala, as the Madonna of Port Ligat, their summer home on the Mediterranean. The bizarre world that flowed up from Dali's subconscious mind, and which he captured on canvas, repelled some. His monstrous visions were sometimes called the work of a lunatic. Dali answered the charge with his famous statement, the only difference between me and a madman is that I am not mad. A little more than six years ago, his wife died suddenly, and Salvador Dali, already ill, shut himself up in a gloomy castle where she is buried in northeastern Spain. Though he never again appeared in public, selected visitors reported him still in love with life, still cherishing a sense of mischief and fun. A man who for so long had amazed, amused, and entertained with his astonishing antics, no less than with his talented brush. A magician of the art world, Salvador Dali. Robert Chant reporting. That's our report on World News tonight. We'll be back tomorrow. I'm Peter Jennings. Have a good evening.